<sighs> All right. Looks like uh, working. All right, here we go. Let's see if we've got people coming up. Awesome. Okay, we have some people joining. Hi. All right, I'm trying to figure out how this live stream thing works. <laughs> we'll just wait for a few more people to get on if you want to uh, just give me a hello if you can see me. Aha, there it is. Hello, Karen. Awesome. All right, cool. We have a few more people joining. Thanks very much, guys. Um, just wait for a few more people to join here. It's just my time is a little bit before the hour still. Um, if you guys have any questions that you definitely want me to cover, um, please feel free to write some comments, um, and I'll definitely try to get to those. I want to... Hey! Hi, everybody. Hi, Val. Hi, Donald. Nice to see you guys. Cool. Um, well, thank you. I'm super happy to be back. Uh, it was so much fun last time doing this. I don't do live video a lot, so um, it's a really uh, good little challenge for me. Um, and thanks very much to the group admins for inviting me. I'm really stoked to see some more of your um, live video series that you have coming up, so I'll stay tuned for that. Definitely um, going to be giving the X theme a try myself. Uh, one of the girls I work with at Sakuri uh, uses and recommends it, and uh, Martin and Rick have been recommending it to me as well. So um, I'm excited to share some stuff from with you guys. Um, just going to get started here in another minute. Got a couple more people joining. Let me know if uh, you do see any issues. Val, I wasn't sure about trying landscape mode here. Let me, let me, is it going to, let's see what happens. Ooh. <laughs> oh, you can't turn it while live. It let me know. It said, don't do it. <laughs> Okay, cool. We're going to get started here in just a second. Hi, Ken. Thanks very much. <laughs> All right. I can see I'm actually watching myself on the live stream and it's a little bit of a lag. So um, trying to get to all your questions and stuff as they come up here, but there might be a little delay. Um, so we'll get started. I'm Alicia from Sakuri. Thank you very much for joining today for my live video. Um, I run our content marketing at Sakuri, so I get uh, the awesome opportunity of working with our very technical uh, security analysts and researchers and then translating some of that content for a wider audience. Um, so I love what we do at Sakuri and I love being able to share that knowledge uh, with you guys. Um, for those of you who missed me last time I did this, I'm going to give a little overview of what I went over last time with a little bit more depth, um, a little bit more advanced techniques and that kind of thing. Um, and basically I'm giving you guys a sneak preview at um, some new content that we're going to be releasing really soon. So uh, if what you're hearing here interests you and, um, you know, you don't want to have to take notes the whole time, stay tuned, um, talk to me, reach out to me, um, and I'll make sure that you um, are on the list to get that content as soon as it's released. Um, but first, before we get started, um, I just wanted to talk a little about what I mentioned with um, e-commerce. So the title of this talk was how to prevent WordPress hacks and to protect your visitors and customers. Um, I know not all of us run online shops, but it is important as we go into a holiday shopping season. Um, you know, we have Black Friday and Cyber Monday coming up. Uh, every year we do notice an increase in credit card skimmers, um, especially last year. So we expect the same to happen this year. Um, we're seeing lots of different types of e-commerce hacks. So it is something that you want to take into consideration. And if you do have a store or if you're just interested in potentially breaking out into um, selling things through your website in the future, you would definitely want to become familiar with the PCI compliance guidelines. PCI stands for payment card industry, and um, it's basically all the major credit card companies like Visa, MasterCard, Discovery, and those guys get together and they have 12 uh, requirements that you need to uh, fulfill in order to be compliant, just to make sure that if you're taking credit card data that uh, everything is secure. 
A lot of us will choose to go through a default payment gateway like PayPal or Authorize.net in order to um, have payments uh, handled by somebody else. And they can deal with all the trouble when it comes to uh, protecting cardholder data. Um, one thing that I, I like to remind people of, and this is something to consider, you know, even if you have different kinds of sites like membership sites and that kind of thing, is a hacker who gets access to your WordPress site um, can easily change where people are going for the checkout process. And this is something we've seen more and more of. Uh, and they can even be sneaky. So it won't be every sale is going to your checkout process. So, you know, maybe you will only notice a few sales dropping off and it won't be such a big deal that it's on your radar. One of the themes that I'm going to talk about today is how hackers like to hide their tracks. Um, so in that case, you know, you have your visitors coming to your site, looking at your online store um, or, you know, WooCommerce, whatever have you. And when they click on something to check out, they're actually getting sent to a hacker's payment page, which is awful. Um, and nobody wants that. Um, so uh, just something to be aware of, um, because that also falls under PCI compliance. Um, the first requirement is to have a website firewall. And that's really the best defense that you can have, um, because no matter whether you're unable to update your site or, um, you know, stay on top of logs and the latest plugins and that sort of thing, um, you have something that's protecting you surrounding your website and, and filtering out that bad traffic. Um, so just wanted to touch on that just with holiday stuff coming. Another big thing for e-commerce and for a lot of website owners now with security is to talk about SSL. Um, last year at WordCamp US, um, there was one security talk and it was on SSL, um, which of course, you know, got all of us at Sakuri thinking about it. And, you know, um, especially with Google pushing SSL now as a ranking signal and uh, starting to blacklist sites that should be using it. Um, so if you're not aware of that, we do have a post on our blog um, talking about how Google's been ramping up, you know, showing warnings in the browser, you know, the little green secure um, padlock icon in your browser. Well, nobody notices that if it says not secure, even if it's in red. So they're starting to ramp up and I truly believe that they're going to be blacklisting soon for websites that should be using SSL. Now, when we talk about SSL, what we're talking about is um, a certificate that encrypts the data in transit between the visitor's browser and your server. Um, it does actually does nothing to protect your site from being hacked in the first place. It just means that any transmission, credit card data, logins, passwords, any input put into a contact form or something like that, that that's all scrambled uh, and encrypted while it's being transmitted to your server, making sure that no hacker can sniff it in between. Um, but it actually doesn't do anything to secure your site. So something that I definitely wanted to talk about right away at the beginning is... Um, kind of the misnomer about um, SSL being security. It's very important. We love SSL, but definitely, um, you know, I would say that I would love to see more people um, talking about how to actually secure the site. And, uh, you know, the SSL isn't just like, doesn't equal security necessarily. There's a lot involved. Um, we talk a lot about defense in depth. Um, so with those kind of... Uh, in there. I'm going to answer a few questions just because I see a few coming up now. Um, thanks, Karen, for posting that link to the PCI. That's awesome. Um, I would say, Eric, Eric, you're talking about is the biggest whole experimental plugins. Not necessarily. I would say uh, plugins and extensions are probably um, the biggest thing to worry about with WordPress just because there's so many of them. And uh, although there is a giant crew of people uh, auditing plugins and auditing core especially like core itself is quite secure um, just because there are so many eyes on it um, with plugins maybe not not the same level of, of depth in, in uh, technical review and security auditing um, so you have to be careful what plugins you're installing and I wouldn't say don't install a plugin um, from you know maybe an experimental developer or somebody who's new I would never want to say that but I would say definitely do your do your due diligence and find out if that developer is going to be able to support you if there's any issues, um, if they could take security seriously, do they have good reviews. Um, there's lots of ways to audit your plugins and make sure you're only installing the ones you need. Every plugin you add is adding more code to your site that could be vulnerable. And uh, any one of those plugins could be the way that hackers get into your site. So for one, definitely make sure you're choosing plugins from reputable trusted sources. Um, if you're buying plugins, you know, um, make sure that you check out the developer and that they're well, re well reviewed. Um, if you're doing something from the free re repository, um, well, first of all, I wouldn't 
ever download a plugin that wasn't in the repository because um, plugins will be removed from the official WordPress repository if they have known security flaws and they're not being patched. <clears throat> Uh, another question from Christopher was, are the majority of hacks performed by bots and automated scripts? That's a great question. And uh, that's actually one of the biggest things that we like to talk about is um, so many people think that their site is never going to get hacked because they're too small. You know, um, people don't even go to their site. You know, they don't get a lot of traffic. Why would a hacker want my site? Um, simply because they make money off of it. So um, there are scripts, automated bots. I would say definitely the vast majority of attacks are attacks of opportunity. There's low hanging fruit. There's tons of WordPress sites out there with outdated vulnerable plugins that, that have known major security flaws in them. And people just aren't aware of this. Um, they expect their host to take care of it. Um, you know, they haven't really thought a lot about security. And so a, a hacker can easily create a script that scans the internet looking for WordPress sites and automatically um, can enumerate the plugins and the users, can brute force passwords, it can find out which plugins have vulnerabilities. Um, there's actually um, a series of videos I did on the Sakuri blog about how to use WP Scan, which is a WordPress vulnerability scanner which is awesome if you're using it to, you know, make sure that there's no holes in your own WordPress installation. But hackers use those kinds of tools too. So in the videos, you can see how I, I've set up a site that's obviously got vulnerable plugins on it. And, um, and uh, I brute force the passwords with a, a small password list. Hackers have tons and tons of passwords and lists that can, um, it can be get, it can be reused or they generate new passwords based on you know character replacement like leet speak and stuff um you know placing uh an a with a four or one with an l that kind of thing and they just generate longer and longer lists so brute forcing is one huge way they do it and then of course vulnerability scanning um finding those uh wordpress sites on the internet simply just by pinging even ip addresses uh, until they find a huge list of sites to attack so I would say that's definitely the highest uh, the highest issue is, is it's targeted attacks or not targeted attacks but um, opportunity attacks. Uh, it's very rare that we see targeted attacks, um, but even then, if they get access to you know your little site, your little server, they can use the resources of your server to attack bigger sites or bigger targets. Um, they can use your server resources to spread spam, to host phishing pages, whatever they want to do. Your small website that you didn't think was going to get hacked could just be one little piece in, in the part of a redirect chain that is eventually leading to malware. They could even host the malware on your site if they have access to it. So it might not be that they want to steal your traffic and visitors, so it really doesn't matter if you have a lot of that. What matters is that you have resources and it's it's just there for the pickings if you don't take steps to secure your site, to monitor for uh, potential compromises and, and indicators, and then to take steps to, to you know, resolve it really quickly. Um, cool. There's uh, some other questions in here just looking. Oh, yeah, we got some. Yeah, Eric, definitely SSL. Um, there's, I th don't know if that's the blog post for sure. Let me just check it out. There's one that Google put out, I think, in 2014, 2015. Um, oh, yeah, so it would have been before this that they actually made it an official rank ranking signal. But Google is definitely doing everything they can to try and get us to go on SSL. So um, I was at an SEO conference in July, and that's what uh, Dr. Pete from Moz, he's this really brilliant research guy, um, basically <laughs> had an analogy, just eat the bees already with SSL. Like, it sucks. Nobody wants to do it. I don't know how eat the bees had anything to do with SSL, but it really stuck in my head. Um, so yeah, definitely, if you don't have SSL yet, highly recommend it. We have a guide on um, sakuri.net slash guides that we just put out last month on how to install SSL for free. Um, it works best if you have your own um, dedicated server or VPS. Um, if you're on a shared server, you might need to work with your host a little bit. But um, Let's Encrypt is free, and uh, that's, there's been an explosion in adopting SSL, so I highly recommend it, um, but also make sure you take steps to secure your site from being hacked as well. Um, cool. So, looking to see if there's anything else. Ah, Eric, great question. So, um, yes, there's lots of hacks that come from Russia and China um, and Turkey and Indonesia and lots of places like that. Um, there's just a large hacking communities there, um, is, is the, the biggest thing. So if you're not supposed to be getting traffic from those areas, um, you can do geo blocking. Uh, our firewall allows you to do it just by checking the boxes on the countries that you either want to allow or uh, block. And, uh, we also, um, 
there's also ways you can do that with like HD access redirects and that sort of thing. Um, okay. Yeah. I hope that answers your question. Uh, does a CDN like Cloudflare offer any extra security or advantages? Yeah. So, uh, Cloudflare, um, started out as a CDN first, so they focus on performance and then they've added security. So they have WAF features as part of that. Um, there is a level of protection there for sure. Um, the way that we've developed our uh, firewall at Sakuri started out with, uh, you know, our security first, um, but it is actually a full CDN now as well. So they kind of operate the same because there's they distribute the traffic around the world, which not only helps with performance and make sure that visitors around the world are connecting to a server that's closest to them, but it also helps because um, if you get are attacked, if there's a DDoS attack and some malicious person is hitting your site with a bunch of fake requests, those are getting distributed and... Um, there's also usually technology and, and uh, intelligence to detect that this is an attack and not just a surge in traffic. So um, I would say definitely uh, it's up to you like what level uh, of protection that you want. With what we do with the security firewall, we have a couple different methods for um, protecting your site. So application profiling, uh, you know, we know that Word, WordPress operates in a specific way and that visitors should be accessing pages and posts and interacting with your site in a certain way. So we whitelist that behavior. That's application profiling. Um, blacklist. So we know there's certain bad things that hackers are trying to do when they access your site. And we block those. And then the third one is correlation. So across our network, we're always looking at, you know, emerging attack types and how that's going to affect other customers on other platforms or, um, you know, just making sure that we're staying ahead of it. Um, so that's the number one thing that we do with our website firewall. I don't know a lot about um, Cloudflare's security. Uh, I know that their WAF is, it does some level of like DDoS protection and vulnerability and stuff. But um, that's just been our, our, our baby from the beginning as we're focused on WordPress especially. Um, so yeah, you can definitely see uh, that in your security dashboard when you see how many attacks we're blocking in general. Um, do, 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 what else we got here? I'll answer a few more questions. What's the link for the free SSL? Um, let me just grab that for you. If you go to sakuri.net slash guides, you'll see a bunch of our guides there. I'm just gonna, just for the sake of being quick, I'm gonna post that really quick. I don't think I can reply to a comment, but I'm just gonna throw it in there. I've got my computer up here and my phone, so working. Oh, Val, look at you go. Thank you very much. Well, yeah, check out that guide specifically. And we have others um, that we've written over the past year. Um, how to clean a hacked WordPress site, what is a Google blacklist, how to remove Google blacklist if your site is um, is blacklisted by Google. Um, awesome. So if there's, n I'll keep trying to check back for questions here, but I'm just going to pop into um, a super secret Google document that um, will be going live hopefully before the end of the month um, and just take you through kind of an introduction here to WordPress security and um, some of the things you should consider. So we've talked about a lot of it already, <laughs> which is great. You guys have really intuitive questions. Um, preventing software uh, vulnerabilities and access control are the two major things that you need to worry about. So when I talk about software vulnerabilities, that's those plugins that I'm, I'm talking about, making sure that you audit them and that you're only installing those that you need. Um, and then assessing uh, whether the plugins that you have left are well supported. Um, you know, removing anything you don't need and then keeping your software updated. Um, you know, I talked about this a little bit before about how a firewall can virtually patch holes in your software. Um, the best thing that you can do to keep your site secure is make sure that you install those updates when they come in. Because sometimes it is just features and new functionality, but, uh, but sometimes there are security flaws that have been patched. And those are the ones that you want to install right away. Um, you know, I know for some people, depending on your site, Installing updates can be a scary thing because it can break functionality on your site. And that's where the, the firewall comes in handy, especially. Um, we see that a lot on like sites like Joomla and, and Magento that have some weird branching going on. Um, but for WordPress, for the most part, um, you know, there's been compatibility testing and that kind of thing. Or if you have a dev or test site, obviously try it there first. But, but do make sure that you prioritize installing those or set up automatic updates if you're okay with that. Um, and yeah. Same goes for core plugins and themes. Um, make sure that you keep those those little red notifications in your dashboard to zeros uh, as much as possible. And then the second piece that I was talking about was um, access control. So poor user credentials. Make sure you have good passwords. I don't need to tell you guys this. You guys know this stuff. <laughs> um, so, you know, 
the common advice has been, you know, don't use admin, um, use rules and, and, and privileges responsibly. So at Sakuri here, uh, we practice the principle of least privilege. Um, Jerson, who's watching right now, has an article on the least privilege. Uh, he can definitely post that if you want to, Jerson. Um, and that talks about basically uh, don't give somebody more privileges than they need. If you have people working on your WordPress site, are they just contributors? Then just give them that. Don't give them full admin. Um, give them as much uh, permissions as they need for the length of time that they need it. So, for example, um, if I'm going away on vacation and I have somebody else managing WordPress for me, I'll give them temporary admin. But they lose that privilege when I get back and I'm managing it. Um, so that would be something I would say that everybody should um, should take into consideration when they're auditing their users. And um, there's also plugins that allow you to do even more um, restrictive roles. Um, so those might be something that you want to look into if you have a lot of people in your CMS. Um, simple things like disabling user registration um, in WordPress can really help. We have a hack that just came out we talked about, I think, last week. Uh, about how subscribers can be, or no, maybe it's not out yet. Oh, right. I'm giving you guys all the secrets of the stuff that's coming up at Sakura here. So <laughs> there's um, an attack that basically um, can elevate the privileges of a subscriber without you knowing it. So you see all these subscribers, but they have admin privileges, like, and, and nothing is shown in the dashboard to, to let you know it's all happening behind the scenes. So definitely disabling new users um, is, is important. And, you know, even for, for us at Sakura, we don't use the default comment system. Um, everybody, literally everybody who's ever installed WordPress ever has had to deal with comment spam. Uh, and that's not like the worst thing in the world for sure. Like it sucks. It's spammy. Um, but it's when those, when those accounts that are registered to create comments or, or something like that are, are, um, if, if they're elevated at all in their privileges, it's not good. Um, beyond just creating good passwords and rules, uh, do other things to make it harder to get into your site. So, um, two factor authentication is like my favorite thing in the world, even though every time that I have to enter a code, I'm like, Oh, this is frustrating. But I repeat to myself, like, I love two FA. I love two FA. It's keeping me safe. Um, if you don't know what two FA is, it means, um, a second factor of authentication to two FA. Um, so for a lot of people, they have Google authenticator on their phone. Um, so that all you need to do is pull up your phone and type in the time limited code after you've entered your password. Um, there is SMS based 2FA, but we're not fans of it because, um, that stuff can be spoofed as well. Um, but it's better than nothing too. So I'm, I'm happy if, if you are <laughs> limiting login attempts is another thing. Um, especially for brute force attacks, like I said, attackers can run password lists on your site, try and every combination until they crack your, your, uh, password. Um, but if you limit login attempts, it makes it a lot more frustrating and it makes sure that they can't just keep doing it over and over forever. There's plugins that do that. There's uh, our firewall does that as well by default. Um, one of the other cool things our firewall does to um, stop abuse of, of your logins is um, we have IP whitelisting. So from the beginning, when you install the security firewall, we ask, would you like to restrict access to your admin panel, like WP admin um, for your IP? And so what that means is the hacker would have to have like be able to spoof or be on your home network or your office network in order to even access your login page. So when I go to log into the Sakuri blog, if I haven't whitelisted my IP address, if I, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, if I ha haven't been whitelisted, then I won't be able to even access the page. I'm just going to see a blocking page. And there's ways to do that with HT access rules as well. Uh, and in the upcoming guide that we have, um, we will actually be walking you through how to do that. So even without using our firewall, it's possible. That's one of my favorite features, actually, because um, it, it really stops, um, it really stops uh, a lot of brute force. Like, there's just nothing they can do. They need to have access to your network. Um, so that's one of my favorites. There's all kinds of other things you can do, like captchas. Um, some people like to move WP admin or rename it, and that sort of thing. Um, so those are the two main categories that you want to be looking at and mindful of when you're securing your WordPress site. Um, stopping vulnerability exploitation and stopping abuse of poor user credentials. Um, now I'm just going to check, make sure I don't have any questions that's been coming up here. Thanks very much guys, by the way, for, for joining. I see a couple more people have joined. I think this, uh, comes up as a recording after, so you can get filled in. Um, do, do, do. Thank you for posting the link, Jerson. 
Um, how to give temporary admin. Okay, so I did talk a little bit about um, granting temporary permissions. Literally, you just go into the users panel in WordPress, um, find the user that you want to change their permissions, grant them whatever they need, if it's editor or admin, and then make sure to set a reminder to change that. So I literally put reminders in my phone uh, in Google Calendar to like remove people's access. Um, that's the way I do it. So um, there are, like I said, some plugins that might be able to possibly automate this or um, have give you more advanced um, control over what access they have. But the default roles in WordPress have always really worked for me. Um, so just making sure that you're giving people the lowest amount of uh, responsibility that, that they need. Um, Val uh, posted our plugin there. So yeah, that's actually, that's a good segue because the next thing I was going to talk about was plugins. Um, cool. So plugins. Um, let's talk about security plugins. We've already talked about auditing your other plugins, but let's talk about the kinds of security plugins you want. Now, obviously I'm a little bit biased because we have a plugin uh, and you should install it, but, <laughs> but there's a couple different categories you want to think about. Um, there's so many security plugins and there's so many of them are very good as well, but there's a couple different categories. We actually have a post as well that Tony, our, um, our co-founder posted on the security blog about the WordPress security plugin ecosystem. And so for our upcoming guide, we stole a lot of, a lot of his content from there. Um, but basically there's four categories that you want to think about when you're thinking about securing WordPress using a plugin. The first one is prevention. So for that category, you just want to make sure um, you're looking at the options that are out there to prevent attacks. So there's some some firewall options, although um, firewalls as a plugin is an interesting concept to me because you have the server, right? And then you have WordPress inside there and you have this plugin inside WordPress that's supposed to be protecting everything. So that's why it can be difficult sometimes for a plugin to stop certain types of attacks. Um, whereas traditionally uh, a website firewall like the security firewall uses a DNS change. So instead of visitors coming to your server, they're coming to our server first in the middle. So we're kind of like are surrounding your website with a perimeter defense system. And then from there, if they get through our servers, if, you know, we've checked for malicious traffic, um, you know, they've, they've connected to one of our CDN servers. So there actually is a performance improvement. I know when I first thought about this, I was like, well, wouldn't that slow down your site? No, it actually speeds it up by, uh, on average, I think 70%. I think WP Beginner has a case study on our site. They use our firewall and they get like 400% more performance, which is insane to me. But um, anyway, so we're surrounding your website. So that kind of prevention is a, a little bit more robust. That doesn't mean that there's not awesome plugins out there that can do some really amazing things. Um, you know, and prevention goes back to what we were talking about before, preventing software vulnerabilities. Um, so hardening, um, that might just be the plugin is adding HT access files that restrict certain types of behavior from a visitor, or it could be preventing uh, people from accessing your login form, uh, your, your login screen, your, your WP admin. Um, so think about prevention and look at what's out there and you can compare plugins using that category. So that's the first one. The second one is detection. This is where our plugin really shines. Um, it's an auditing plugin. So we ha have a baseline of your website when you install it and then we check for any changes that are happening. So, oh, you wrote a new post? Great. A new post is not a bad big deal, but we might scan it and see if there's malware in it, you know, if that post was maliciously created or if there's new files being added or files are being modified. We'll check your core files to make sure that there's, um, we call it a core file integrity check. And right from the plugin, you can restore um, the default um, file from, from the, the, the version that you're using of WordPress. Um, so detection is great. Um, it's a very important uh, part of security. Uh, I find that among uh, smaller website owners, it's not the biggest priority, but among larger uh, enterprises and mid-market companies, um, monitoring is huge. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, we have a free scanner called SiteCheck as well that allows you to just put in your website URL and we scan it remotely. Um, you can only find so much with a remote scan. It's actually the same scan that's in our plugin. Um, and then, uh, you know, it, it'll look at your site from different angles. So detection includes like, well, what if a mobile visitor comes to my site? Are they getting redirected to like a porn site or a pharmaceutical site? Um, if, uh, you know, they're coming from a different country or if their refer is, you know, a specific thing like Google, maybe they'll get different results um, on your site because of the conditional hack. So detection is important. Um, there's lots of ways that attackers hide from, from you so that they can't be detected. 
Um, and this is why our platform is awesome too, because in addition to the remote scanner, we have a server side scanner. Whoop, I keep hitting my table. <laughs> uh, we have a server side scanner that actually checks every file uh, and, and checks your whole database for spam or injections, uh, new phishing pages, stuff like that. Um, so detection is huge. Um, and auditing as well uh, is kind of within that. Um, auditing your uh, files and making sure that um, you know your core files are, are not being modified or that there's nothing new being added. Um, basically like looking at your logs. Um, this includes user logs. One of the things that we like to talk about is um, with users on your site, if they're not logging in at a normal time, for example, or a normal lo geographic location, that could indicate that their account's been compromised. So our plugin also has auditing for that kind of thing um, to show you when users have been logging in and, and a full log of what's been happening in WordPress so that if you are hacked, you can go back and find out what happened and how far back maybe you need to restore a backup. Um, if that's going to be the way that you're going to fix it or maybe to just go in and manually clean it up. And again, we have a guide on our website at sakuri.net slash guides on how to clean a WordPress hack. So that includes identifying the hack fixing it and then, you know, taking any post-hack actions that are important to close those holes, um, to get off blacklists and that kind of thing. Um, so the final category for WordPress security plugins, we talked about prevention, detection, auditing, and the third one is utility. So these are, I think, by far the most that we see um, for free plugins in the official repository. Utility plugins will um, do things like um, just one thing, like move your WP login or um, add a CAPTCHA or 2FA, um, or you know, even you could consider backup plugins under this. Um, they're, they're a utility that does one specific thing rather than an all-in-one plugin that tries to do um, a lot of the things all together. Um, so those are the four categories I would look at um, and see if you've got your bases covered. Again, you don't want to install every <laughs> plugin because the more plugins you install, even if it's a security plugin, it could have flaws in it, um, and that could be the vulnerable code that ends up getting your site hacked in the first place. So choose your plugins wisely. Um, with security plugins, there's those four categories that you want to look at. So um, let me pop back into the chat here in my other window and see if there's some questions here. Thanks, Val, for posting that article. That's awesome. Um, there's some other great plugins here that uh, Val was posting. Um, mm -hmm. WordPress, the Honeypot feature. Actually, that's interesting. Uh, Rajendra, I'm hoping I pronounced your name right. Uh, maybe if WordPress implemented a Honeypot feature for native forms like comments, login pages, we could minimize spam and brute force attacks. Um, I'm not sure exactly what you're referring to maybe. Um, I know we've used Honeypot sites before to catch stuff. I think it might help them in detecting things. Um, I think the more that you mark comments as spam too, I'm hoping that that uh, information is used. I'm not super familiar with it, but um, we do, um, yeah, we do see a lot of spam. I think that uh, the best thing you can do is probably do a CAPTCHA. We do that on the Sakuri uh, website and on our blog as well. Um, I don't remember. Let's see if there's anything else here. Uh, spell plugin names. Um... Oh, okay, so uh, for the plugin that I mentioned uh, so far uh, was the Sakuri Scanner plugin. Um, I'm not sure which other ones I mentioned. Um, the best thing for you to do would just be to look at the security plugins in the official WordPress repository. Um, obviously, some of the big ones out there are iTheme Security. Um, we actually have a case study of them. They use our firewall. Um, WordFence is a huge one, um, but there's some other smaller ones that do specific things like those utility plugins that are really awesome. Awesome. Hi. Oh, hey, Richard is here. Hello. Um, Akismet is great too. Um, obviously it comes pre-installed. Um, so I highly recommend you use that if you're using the WordPress commenting system. Awesome. Okay. Where am I? Perfect. I got just a few more things to run through here. So please, if you have questions, make sure to put them in the chat box and I'll make sure to get to them. <clears throat> so a couple quick things I want to go over too with hosting and backups. So a lot of us think that our hosts have all the uh, security for us, um, but you want to talk to your host and see exactly what they do. Because in a lot of cases, the hosting companies are securing their server environment. They want to make sure that they're keeping sites on their server safe from each other, but they're not doing a lot to secure you um, 
Because at the end of the day, whatever you choose to add to your site, uh, they don't have a lot of control over it. Um, but they will test, um, they will suspend your site if your site is, you know, using uh, an inordinate, inordinate amount of resources or sending spam emails or any of that other nasty stuff. Um, similar to how Google will blacklist you or antivirus company, companies will blacklist you. Um, the biggest thing with your host is you want to talk to them about what security options are available and how they'll handle it if your site does get attacked or how they'll let you know if they have those things, detection, protection, and response. What, what are, how are they going to handle those for you? And then you can make the decision if you need um, more, uh, either you know through plugins. I, I think as a bare minimum, you should be making sure you have very, very uh, good passwords for all your users, making sure you have a really reliable backup system. Um, and that includes backups being off-site because if you're storing backups on your server, and those backups don't get updated, and there's a security flaw in one of those old backups, the hackers can actually hack your backup on your server and then use that to get into your site, either just by jumping right into it if it's in the same sort of um, directory structure, or um, opening your wp-config file, finding your database credentials, and then, and then hacking your site that way. Backups should also be automatic and you should have them in multiple places, so redundancy. Um, we often say in cybersecurity that data doesn't exist unless it's in three places um, because otherwise it's just it's just vulnerable to to loss um, or, or damage and then of course if you have a backup system have you ever tested it have you ever tried to restore it um, on a, either a dev site or a test site or do you know that you can go through the restore process and it's going to work um, I've worked with some friends uh, who have WordPress websites where they just installed you know a plugin uh, to back up their site and then never tested it, but the restore process never worked when, when we tried it. So uh, not to scare you, but definitely make sure that that's one of the things you do. If backups, especially if it's your main safety net and the main way that you would recover if something happened. Um, another thing to think about with your hosting is how you're connecting to your site. So if you're a developer um, or if you're working on the server, um, we definitely highly recommend that you use SFTP instead of unencrypted FTP. For the same reason we talked about how SSL is awesome because it protects the data between your visitor and your server. Um, SFTP or SSH, those are the secure protocols for um, connecting from your computer to your server um, to upload files or you know modify files or whatever you're, whatever you're doing. Um, so the S always stands for secure, right? HTTPS, SFTP. Um, so definitely that would be uh, the two things that I would talk about with hosts is, you know, what are they doing? Uh, how are you connecting to your site? Or the third thing is backups as well. Um, uh, let's see here. So I have a bunch of recommendations that you guys might want to look up on your own. Um, what extent is the free security plugin enough? Uh, so Christy asked about our free security plugin. So like I said, it shines in the detection and auditing category. Um, we also have some awesome stuff for if you are hacked, like if we detect something, um, we detect that you're blacklisted by McAfee, we'll give you some steps to go through um, to recover. And it's, it's like I said, great for auditing users. And um, we actually have a, a, our guide on how to clean a hacked WordPress site has a lot of information about the plugin. Um, it doesn't do as much to protect your site. There are hardening uh, recommendations. So we have like one click buttons that harden your site. And I'm actually going to about to talk about those right now. So again, thank you, Christy, for the awesome segue. Um, and thank you for, uh, I think, oh yeah, Regendra also put in WSP Spam Shield as an alternative for a Kismet. Um, WordFence, Jetpack, yep, these are great. Um, okay, so hardening recommendations. So I'm just skipping ahead now to the, um, well, I'm not skipping ahead, really. All I was going to talk about was a little bit more about integrity monitoring and that kind of thing. But I think we covered that to death a little, talking about plugins. Um, so for hardening, if you're not familiar with an HT access file, um, then uh, I would recommend looking into it a little bit. There's some recommendations on the official WordPress codex. Um, actually, I think Tony wrote some of those as well. So he has um, definitely contributed to the documentation there. Um, and there's some rules that you can put into an HT access file. It's basically uh, a file that sits at the, the root of a folder. So it could be the root of your site or it could be the WP uh, includes folder, WP content uploads. Uh, and the HT access file is the first one read by the server. And it tells the server like, hey, um, 
don't don't allow somebody to do this or hey if they're trying to access this page we actually redirected it to this page so any seos out there are familiar with 301 redirects those go into the ht access file <clears throat> so there's a couple rules that unfortunately due to the nature of live facebook video i can't really show you but hey i'm going to tease you about it and you're going to email me or let me know if you want to see the guide when it comes out where i'll actually be showing these steps <clears throat> so the first rule, and these are things that we do as part of our plugin, I believe, as well. Um, everybody's probably done the rewrite rule that goes uh, along with WordPress. So if you've installed it yourself manually, you've probably had to edit at HT Access. Not sure if everybody's familiar with it. But one of the things I mentioned earlier was restricting logins to specific IP ranges. So our firewall does this automatically. And we have a little handy bookmark that, you know, if you're at an airport and you want to log into your site, you can quickly whitelist your IP um, Although, you know, public Wi-Fi, not maybe the best place to be doing very sensitive stuff on your website. Um, but you can actually restrict logins to um, specific IPs by using uh, an, uh, an HT access directive. So <clears throat> essentially, you just uh, tell the, the in, in the code, you just say that you want to limit um, people from accessing your WP login page and you just allow from and you can put whatever IP addresses that you use for your home or office or the people working on your site <clears throat> and you can add to that file whenever you want in order to allow more access. Another one that we like to do um, to harden your site is to protect WP config. So that just denies access to your WP config file which is the sensitive file that connects your file system to your database. Um, Hackers get access to those credentials. They can wreak havoc on your database, um, inject a bunch of spam into it. And I've watched people at Sakuri clean websites before and database spam and database hacks are, are really painful um, <clears throat> just because of like how much we need to go through. We have tools that makes it really fast, thankfully, but I would never want to do that manually. So um, protecting WP config is a huge, huge thing. Um, we've actually seen some people moving WP config. And so we talk about that a little in our upcoming guide as well. Um, preventing de directory browsing is another one you might want to look into. Um, so this rule prevents attackers from viewing the folder contents of your website um, and restricts the information they have available to exploit your site. Um, a couple of other things you can do with HT Access. This isn't necessarily a security thing, but preventing image hot linking. So you know if you have original uh, images on your site, it prevents other websites from um, just using that resource and, and linking to that image on your site. Um, it, it, it can be really damaging when it, it exploits your server resources, especially if they're linking to an image on, that's hosted on your server and they send a lot of traffic to it. Um, depending on your hosting setup, that could be expensive. Um, <clears throat> not a huge security thing, but but like it's not going to hurt your site, but it might hurt your your uh, wallet a little bit. <laughs> so uh, another one is to protect HT access. So you're making all these fancy rules in HT access. Um, you should make sure that they can't actually access that file either. So uh, any files that starts with HTA um, <clears throat> is how we have set up the rule, but um, you know, there's probably different ways you can do it if you have files that start with HTA that you need people to access. Uh, another big one is to block includes. So um, <clears throat> in WP admin includes, WP includes, um, you know, whatever other sort of include folders you have on your site, it blocks hackers from inserting malicious files. Um, so there's a couple primary folders that we identify um, that you might want to use this in. Uh, like I said, an HT access file can go within a folder on your site or it can just go in the root. Um, this one would go into a specific folder. Um, another one is to prevent PHP backdoors. This is actually a big one. Um, so this just prevents anybody from uploading um, PHP files, uh, especially if you already have a way for people to upload files to your site somehow. Um, you don't want them to be uploading PHP. So um, we we have one specifically that we put into WP includes <clears throat> and one that we put into D WP content uploads because um, those are two really popular locations for malicious file uploads. Um, a couple of things I might want to cover really quick that are more advanced are, um, you know, making sure that when you set up your WP config file or that you go in there um, after the fact, if you haven't done it, and add your salts and keys. Um, so these make sure that um, they basically improve the security of cookies and passwords in transit in your browser and make sure that nobody can hijack sessions. We had a couple uh, 
blog posts over the last year of, of session hijacking that was like really scary that an attacker can basically uh, grab your cookie that you're logged in, you know, and if you didn't log yourself out of WordPress, there is an automatic timeout. But um, it basically sends the cookie to the attacker, and then from there, they can automate all kinds of stuff um, to basically do whatever an admin can do. And admins, <clears throat> as you know, have access to the theme editor, um, so essentially they have root access to your site. Like They can change whatever they want and, and mess around, so it's not good. Um, disabling file editing, too, is something that we recommend as an advanced step. Um, so that's that's exactly what I was just talking about, about being able to edit themes and stuff through your dashboard. Um, some plugins like ours already disable file editing as part of the hardening process or, or as an extra setting. Um, cool. So that's some of the really advanced stuff. Like I said, it's unfortunately I can't. I, I'll probably um, post the guide once I have it so you guys can take a look at it. And um, definitely if you're interested in this kind of stuff, make sure to sign up. We have an email um, subscription form on our blog, um, or I can post it as well here after, and you guys can sign up, and that way you'll get notified when I put out this guide that has basically uh, everything that I just went over in a little bit more depth. Um, so let's see what we've got. Uh, I've got some people saying, yes, Richard, you want the guide? Awesome, I will make sure you get it. Um, what does generating an API key on the plugin do? Um, I'm guessing you think you're talking about the security, the security scanner. Um, there's two options. So we, if you have security, if you are a customer and you use the security dashboard, we can integrate our firewall with the security plugin. So you'd need to log into your security dashboard and, um, generate the API key there. I'm pretty sure that's the one that you're talking about. And then Val, um, posted a knowledge base article there for you guys. Cool. Um, I'm pretty much nearing the end of what I have here. There's a couple more things that we cover in the upcoming guide, so definitely please stay tuned. Um, I will submit, uh, or I'll put a little comment in here to our subscription form so that you guys can um, sign up for more information and make sure that you get that stuff. We um, have a couple different options if you're only interested in getting, for example, like vulnerability um, disclosures. We put those out whenever there's a major one. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, we also have a newsletter. We have some educational content and that kind of thing that you guys might be interested in. Do, do, do. Bam. There it is. All right. So I just posted the link to subscribe if you guys are interested in getting this guide when it comes out. Um, I'll just wrap up. There's a couple more sections I do want to go over. Okay. We talked about SSL. Um, I would love to know from you guys like what you guys use for security or if any of this has been particularly helpful or maybe if we do another one of these in the future if you'd want me to dive into more depth into a specific topic like Google blacklisting or um, I know we talked a little bit about DDoS protection and a little bit about you know e-commerce and SSL and that kind of thing. Um, it's really awesome to do this and I just want to make sure to thank again the um, X-Theme uh, Group admins, uh, Martin, Rick, and Karen have been awesome. Um, I'd love to do this again sometime. I'm going to check one more time here for questions from you guys. <sighs> well, that's fun. It's always great talking about security. It's like one of the best topics on the internet. I always consider myself very lucky that marketing and cybersecurity are kind of like those two really um, interesting uh it's an interesting crossroads where we, but we both know about white hat and black hat and there's some scary stuff and there's also some really cool stuff. So it's always a cat and mouse game. Um, make sure that you're um, constantly working on your security posture. Best thing you can do is read blogs, um, take time, audit your site, um, make it a priority. Uh, if you run an agency uh, or work with customers, um, it can definitely set you apart by... Uh, by ha being a thought leader when it comes to security and, and educating your clients because they don't know what's happening either. They think that you're taking care of it. They think that your host is taking care of it. Um, I was just at WooConf last week. It was awesome and uh, definitely was cool to talk to a lot of uh, agencies that work with e-commerce sites. Um, but it, it's awesome. If you can spread the word, make sure that um, you're keeping yourself secure and everybody stay safe out there. Thanks very much for watching. Take care.